2008 was a groundbreaking year for Queens and The Courier. From heartbreaking stories of local soldiers losing their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan, to a fencer who overcame tremendous odds to win in Beijing, an historic election to political scandals, an emotional look at the Holocaust, to a controversy over a real estate development. The Courier offered readers an eclectic mix of news and opinion that kept their fingers on the pulse of the borough. As 2008 began, the Courier continued to follow the story of four Elmhurst teenagers who saved the life of a newborn infant abandoned in a dumpster one cold night shortly before Christmas. Later in the month, police in Queens averted a potential tragedy as they arrested a man who was harboring an arsenal of weapons in a flushing apartment, including about a dozen handguns, numerous other firearms, 40 large knives, and close to 30,000 rounds of ammunition. When the calendar turned to February, the Courier covered the Super Tuesday presidential primaries, with Queens loving U.S. Senator Hillary Clinton, giving her nearly 60% of the Queens vote in a victory over Barack Obama in New York. Later that month, the paper wrote an exclusive story about how the Hollywood writer's strike, which lasted more than four months, impacted Queens. With two major film studios, Kaufman Astoria and Silver Cup, in Queens, many production hours were lost and the ripple effects were felt at many local establishments. To kick off March, The Courier ran an exclusive front page story on the Internet's impact on local and national elections. The Courier also reported on the debacle that forced then-Governor Elliot Spitzer to resign from office. April means the start of springtime, which, in the minds of many, means baseball, plain and simple. In honor of the final season the Mets played at Chase Stadium, The Courier paid tribute to the ballpark while giving readers a glimpse of the Mets' new home, City Field. And the paper capped off its reporting on Mayor Bloomberg's congestion pricing plan after the State Assembly killed the controversial proposal by never bringing it for a vote before the legislative body. In May, media from across the country descended upon a Queens courtroom to hear the verdict in the Sean Bell trial. Bell was shot and killed by a fusillade of police bullets outside of Jamaica Strip Club in November of 2006, the night before he was supposed to get married. The judge returned a not guilty verdict for the three police officers on trial, and the courier was inside the courtroom and on the streets of Queens to hear the emotional reactions and cover the story as protests enveloped the borough. During the second week of May, the courier began what would become a five-part series called The Legacy of the Holocaust. Through articles and video, the courier transported readers back in time and across oceans into the ghettos of the oppressed and inside the death camps of the persecuted, enslaved, and tortured, at the same time highlighting the hope and perseverance that embodied many of those who lived and grieved the Holocaust. In June, the Courier shifted its focus to the airline industry and examined a report produced by the Federal Joint Economic Committee, which found that JFK and LaGuardia boasted the nation's longest delays per passenger. The Courier also reported on actions that saved off-track betting from demolition as the state stepped in and took over the authority. On July 10th, Maria del Rosario Duran heard the news that every parent hopes they will never have to hear, but something she had feared for 14 months. Military officials found the remains of her son, Sergeant Alex Jimenez, in Iraq. Duran spoke exclusively with the Courier shortly after she heard the horrible news. In August, the Courier reported on a disturbing trend that showed a spike in the murder rate in South Queens, with more murders committed during the first seven months of 2008 than all of 2007. Later that month, the Courier was happy to report that Queens fencer Keith Smart brought home a silver medal from the Olympics after he staged two come-from-behind victories. In September, the Courier continued its war on graffiti by spotlighting Ozone Park resident Scott Jordan who caught notorious graffiti vandal Sum Z in the act and called police, which led to Sum Z's arrest. The Courier also reported the breaking news that the FBI arrested longtime Queens Assembly member Anthony Seminario on charges that he accepted $500,000 in bribe money in exchange for actions he allegedly took as a New York State lawmaker. In October, the Courier again covered breaking news, this time involving a shootout in a crowded Astoria subway station where police officers Jason Mass and Shane Farina were shot while attempting to arrest an alleged fare beater. After a struggle, the suspect got a hold of one of the cop's weapons and was subsequently shot four times by another police officer. During the last issue of October, 
The Courier followed up on its coverage of the term limits extension saga and recapped Mayor Bloomberg's victory, getting a majority of the city council members to support his controversial push to extend term limits from two to three terms. Historic changes was the headline of the Courier's first edition of November. <laughs> After President-elect Barack Obama's decisive victory, as well as State Senator-elect Joseph Adabo's victory over longtime Republican incumbent State Senator Serfin Maltese. Adabo's victory appeared to give Democrats a majority in the Senate for the first time in decades. Shortly before Thanksgiving, the Courier reported on the City Council's approval of the often controversial Willits Point development project, which would cost $3 billion and bring nearly 2 million square feet of retail space, 500,000 square feet of office space, and 5,500 units of housing in addition to a hotel, school, and convention center to the Iron Triangle. During the first issue of December, the Courier talked with small and large retailers and shoppers who were out on Black Friday to find out how the economy was affecting their purchases. Unfortunately, during the Black Friday rush, a Queen's security guard working at a Walmart in Long Island became the victim of a tragedy when a crowd of shoppers broke down the doors early that morning and stampeded him to death. The Courier ended the year on a more positive note, as its editorial staff brought a bit of holiday cheer to people across the borough. After collecting, sorting, and wrapping hundreds of gifts from readers and staff members, Courier reporters, with the help of Santa Claus, of course, delivered presents to dozens of children and families across Merry Queens, Christmas. and watched as big smiles lit up some little faces as 2008 drew to a close. Have you been a good boy this year? Yeah.